three identical lamps, a 12 volt one, 24 volt one, and 240 volt one. They all seem to work on, well, the, certainly the, this, the 240 volt one seems to have a capacitive dropper, so it only works on AC, but the 12 and 24 volt seem to work on DC, but because they got a full bridge rectifier, because they work both polarities, I presume they'll work on AC fine as well. So let's plug the 24 volt, the 240 volt one, he said, double checking. And they all have the same arrangement inside. They've got seven sections of the three LEDs, plus six on top. So they've got about nine times three, 27 uh, LEDs in them. And this one draws about 2.4 watts and has that slight shimmer. It's not actually too bad as the iPad Go. So let's uh, open this one, then we'll take a look at those ones and power them off a low voltage DC supply. So let's open this one. Pretty typical of what you'd expect. It's got the circuit board. I'm just going to short out that big fat capacitor with a metal screwdriver. Yep, that looks like it's discharged. That is discharged. Um, so it's a capacitive dropper with a 560 nanofarad 400 volt capacitor, bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, which I'd guess is the usual 4.7 megafarad 400 volt, 4.7 megafarad 400 volt and just the usual support resistors, and then probably driving all those LEDs in series. Okay. So, um, right. Uh, that's what that one looks like inside. Now let's try the other one. So let's get the other, other ones. So let's put uh, any polarity, it doesn't really matter. I'll just put the DC supply onto the plug here. And we'll plug the 12 volt one in. And the 12 volt one lights up at on 12 volts DC, it's drawing about 156 milliamps at 12 volts. But if you run it up, if you imagine you're plugging it into a car or something like that, it goes up to, th that current over doubles, it goes up at about say 15 volts to 369 milliamps. So it's just a standard resistive dropper inside. Uh, rather disappointingly, the 24 volt one, which shouldn't have started lighting until it reached about say, if the LEDs were in series groups of six or whatever, you know, that fits in nicely, it shouldn't have started lighting till it reached about, say, uh, 14 to 16 volts, but it happily lights at 12 volts. And it does suggest that this is actually just a 12 volt lamp, but it's like series multiples of three. Um, and they're just using uh, a, a big resistor maybe to drop the difference in the voltage for the 24 volts, so it's not terribly efficient. But let's take a look inside them. Oh, let's turn this up to 24 volts. Da -da. At 24 volts, it draws 139 milliamps. Um, so the power of that, if we work that out, will be 24 volts times it's gone up to 0.141 equals about 3.38 watts, but keep in mind, well over half of that is just being dissipated as heat. It's not even going to, to the light. So I'd say it's about a one and a half watt lamp. It's not that great. Yeah. But having said that, one advantage of the 24 volt lamp is if you used it in a 12 volt vehicle, uh, then even with a sort of fairly high floating battery voltage, it's going to work very well just as a low-level sort of night lighty type lamp. So let's open these ones up too and take a look at what's inside them. I'll just get the, rid of the socket. Power off. Right, let's take a look at the 12 volt one first. Is this glued? Or is it just really, really tight? It's open. Right. So there's a bridge rectifier on the bottom. Couple of solder joints. Could they be a resistor? The LEDs, the tracks on here, are not zigzagging all the way down. I wonder if each of these circuit boards has a resistor in the back. Meter. Let's put this to guesstimate. Uh, not sure what the resistance will be if it is a resistor per 
First of all, let's just check for continuity between the output of the rectifier and the ends of the LEDs. So it's going straight to the ends of the LEDs. What about the other end? That's the negative. Yeah, it's going straight to the ends, so I'm guessing these do have a resistor in them, perhaps, in the back. Uh, the only way I can really think of... If I check between there and there, do I get in? Nope. If I check between there and there... Eighty-one ohms. Uh, let's try that in the next one along and see if I get the same from the same position. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying that each of these would probably have a resistor on it. Uh, the top circuit has... Let's see, what's that uh, connecting to? Is that connecting to... So the top, one end is connecting to the negative. It's going through those LEDs and then it's disappearing through to the back. So would that be a resistor again? And a couple of resistors in the back of this board. So if I go through that plated through hole there uh, and check onto positive. Yeah, 81 ohms. Okay, so every single circuit of three LEDs has an 81 ohm resistor. Let's see if the 24 volt one is just using a resistor a different value of resistor. It's different already. It's not got the bridge right far in the bottom, but there must still be a bridge right far, so maybe it's another side. I'm seeing holes that possibly are for a capacitor, maybe. Oh, I've just snapped a wire off. Uh, if those holes are for the capacitor, that would at least give me a connection point for... All these LEDs are actually just snaked together. Hold on. Continuity. So I'm guessing I might have continuity between here and maybe one end of it. Okay but not the other end. It's actually got a resistor in there, so what's that resistor going to be? About 100 ohms. Is that the same resistor that's then feeding all of them? I think it is. I think it's possibly one 100 ohm resistor feeding them all. Does that work out? Uh, where's the calculator? So I had about on the I I had about uh, twenty four volts was one hundred and forty three milliamps. So uh, twenty four volts. Um, R. Uh, hold on. Let's see. I go P. I go to V over R. R equals V over I. Twenty four volts minus the voltage of the LEDs, which I'd say is probably about say. 9 um, equals divided by the current, which was about 143... Oh, 100 ohms. Okay, right. Uh, I kind of want to open this now, but uh, it doesn't look like I can open it without breaking solder joints, but having said that, I don't like it anyway, so I may just break one and take a look inside. Um, I can spot the resistor, if there is just one, over at this side. I think it's this connection here, so I'm going to actually just nibble my way through this solder joint then. Oh, this is actually keyed in as well. I don't think this is going to work, is it? I'm not going to be able to just get this out. Sugar. Yeah, okay then. Off comes the whole top then. That's alright, I got these to take to bits anyway. And if I'm just Chewing, if I'm just uh, nibbling through the solder joint, I can theoretically just sit that back on again. Said Clive, making an unusually loud crunching noise. Uh, 
Okay, this looks promising. A pair of pliers, a pair of scrappy looking pliers, but they'll do, they'll do indeed. So there's the bridge rect fire on the inside. Can you see that? There's the bridge rect fire down there at the bottom. And there's the resistor, which is brown, black, brown. It is, that is just one great big resistor. And it's right behind these LEDs here, which means they're going to get absolutely grilled in normal operation because they've got such a high power resistor right behind them, heating the, the surface that you know they're on. That's, that's not very impressive. I don't like the 20, 24 volt lamp. Nah. The 12 volt lamp looks pretty good. The 240 volt lamp looks pretty typical, but uh, I just don't like this 24 volt lamp because it's just not an efficient design at all. It's just basically burning off half its power, over half its power as heat. But yeah, it was uh, worth getting them and taking a look inside anyway. So just for the sake of completeness, let's take a look at the schematics of all these lamps. We'll start with the most complex, which is the 240 volt one. But I say 240 volt, technically speaking it would operate from anywhere from about 120 to 250 volts. But at the lower voltages it would be a, a lot dimmer, but would last a lot longer. So it's got the standard capacitive drop arrangement, whereby it's got a 560 nanofarad capacitor in series with the bridge rectifier. And that means that it's going to let through a small portion of current in each half of the AC mains waveform. And this will only work in AC. If you were to put it across DC, it would possibly glow very dimly just by result of the, the fact a tiny current would leak through the one mega ohm resistor. That's the discharge resistor though across that capacitor. So you get the bridge rectifier, then you get a smoothing capacitor, 4.7 megafarad at 400 volt, very common value. And a one mega ohm discharge resistor across that, all cookie cutter values. Uh, two 82 ohm resistors in parallel, an odd value, but I'll mention that later because it does make sense. And then all the LEDs are connected, all 27 of them are connected in series. And it just basically, the positive and the negative just zigzag up and down and then jump onto the top, go around, and then one of them comes down the back of the circuit board, which I'm guessing uh, ultimately and those ones may just have a, as standard, a pad at the top and bottom for continuity or it might be a dedicated circuit board just for that task of taking the power back down to the bottom but um, moving on to the uh, 12 volt version the 12 volt version it will operate in AC or DC there's no smoothing it goes straight through a bridge rectifier if they'd added the smoothing there's the potential that the 12 volts would have gone up to once it was smoothed 12 volt AC times 1.41 it would have gone up to about 17 volts uh, if it had been smoothed. So that's probably why they didn't use the smoothing. And all it's using, uh, because the circuitry is just simple, it's, it's a resistor and three LEDs repeated times nine. And here's where that 82 ohm resistor crops in again. I measured this around about 81 ohms, but 82 ohms is the nearest standard value. And the fact they're using 82 ohms there as well means they're probably just minimising stock in the factory by using 82 ohms for everything. Well, not everything, but the, but where it could be used. So that's uh, the 12 volt lamp is one of the simple est. But then the 24 volt lamp is also simple. However, it's grossly inefficient. It's coming in AC or DC, going through the bridge rectifier. So it doesn't matter which way around you actually put it into the lamp holder; it will still light if it's in DC. Then it goes through this 100 ohm resistor in here big beefy 100 ohm resistor and then the LEDs are all connected as series multiples of 3 times 9 all connected in parallel so unfortunately that means that you know more power than all the LEDs combined is being dissipated just by that resistor which seems wasteful but ultimately you know it keeps it very simple it means they can use standard circuit boards uh, for, throughout the whole lamp range but yeah it's interesting enough it was certainly worth taking them to bits and exploring them